It's 100 years now since water imported from the Eastern Sierra entered this improbable city. For cities to exist, they need water. From the discovery of silver at Cerro Gordo that kick-started the transforming of a backwater Spanish village into a great metropolitan area. To the enterprising underhanded corralling of water sent south via the Los Angeles aqueduct. The two areas, so different in many ways, have been linked like conjoined siblings, birthed on November 5th, 1913. There are a whole lot of assumptions we make by living in a city like Los Angeles. We assume there'll be enough water somehow. We assume there'll be enough food somehow. We assume there'll be enough power somehow. And some of us are wondering Is this a reasonable assumption to make? What now, Watershed? What now? Let's begin a new century. Let's begin with something that makes us think differently. Let's walk this pipeline travel south with the water, through many landscapes it passes through. Let this drawing be a drawing in space and time. image of this place, not the kind of image a 19th century painter might draw of a landscape, but rather an image that channels nature and space into experience. Transformation happens when disparate parts of a community are connected in new ways. It brings about a general upward sweep of human consciousness accompanied by activity. It happens quietly. Not quite unnoticed. Just as the dust cloud from the desiccated Owens Lake bed slips across a continent and a sea. This construction of this image will engage communities to think about our world and in thinking about making our world better by both actions and creating insight through image into the truth of history.
When the first Europeans came to the East Coast, there wasn't really any soil. It was mostly forest and ground cover. George Washington brought in the mule and made his fortune selling them here. The transformation of the Americas in the first hundred years involved agriculture made possible by the imported animal labor force of the earthworm, the mule, and the honeybee. The mules were brought out west to haul water up to the silver mines like Cerro Gordo. The carbons from their manure were used to produce soil. In fact, the Metabolic Studio Soil Project in the valley is how I first got acquainted to the Packer community. A hundred mules walking the Los Angeles aqueduct would have remained a dream without the assistance of Jen and Lee Rozier. They were able to assemble a world-class team of wranglers that came to participate on this project, specifically for the opportunity to work with them. When we started to talk, Jen and Lee shared about the challenges that the Packer communities are facing today. Now there's a reconsideration about letting mules access federal land held in trust for us all. If broken, the skill set involved with trailblazing and firefighting will be hard to regain. We realized that perhaps this walk could benefit consciousness about the mules and how they shaped our continent. Including the construction of the West as we know it through the LA Aqueduct. We're in a 2,000 year relationship with this animal. A cross between a horse and a donkey. Our route has been bookended by two symbolic pieces of engineering. The intake of the LA Aqueduct, which is just north of Jen and Lee Rozier's ranch in Independence. Cascades in Silmar, 
where the water that's been imported from the Owens Valley is first released into the city. These symbolic nodes are the beginning and ending of the route. The first section of aqueduct we rode by was open channel. Riding beside pristine water against the mountains was emotional. It's too bad people aren't permitted to experience this. The baked earth being pounded by the sharp shoes of the mule. The dust of a never walked path. Just taking the safe route, breaking it, breaking down the strings and making it simple. Don't want to get wet today. <laughs> what do you want to do here, Jennifer? We're going to dismount the riders. They've got a ride right over there. We'll just take these mules across. We've got to wait for CHP anyway. To move the mules requires that the mules be split up into groups of ten called strings. Each string has a wrangler that is dedicated to it. These strings of mules all wearing blankets labeled with the number 100. It's a surprising image. Mules, a hundred of them, all labeled with the 100 blankets.
and it started literally tens of thousands of conversations about water over the breakfast table. I think it got people talking about it and images of mules walking across the desert. Children were fascinated by it. I've heard so many stories of children asking their parents why these mules were coming down to Los Angeles and what does all this have to do with water? Go ahead, Camden. It does look really soft. I mean, we can see where people have gotten stuck out in this cold hay field. We're going to go ahead and try it with a water truck and shoot some water on it and, and uh, see if we can knock it down. There's plenty of nice room, but it's just going to be a real soft surface. Keep us posted, too. There might be, there might be some private property options um, nearby, too. Um. Rivers of mules ribbons of green in this arid landscape. It's a no-go on the water truck. Uh, we got it about 30 yards in and then had a real hard time getting it out, so we're going to stop there. Wouldn't it be fun and wouldn't it be good if streams that run from the mountains to the sea as they move through canals and storm drains could again be connected to form a new river that moves through our city and transforms concrete and tarmac covered lots into breathing, thriving places that support life? have an inkling of what some of the first explorations of the West might have been like. When people like John Wellesley Powell were commissioned by the U.S. government with his one arm from his Civil War injury to explore the Colorado River and the arid lands. He came up with incredible maps, which are worth a reconsideration today about how the West could be divided if we looked to developing communities around where water is available, rather than engineering water to move where we want it to go. However, unlike Powell's exploration, our 100 mule team was supported by water salvaged from the Los Angeles aqueduct.
what can we do in this next century? The whole idea of bending the LA River back into the city, bringing the Los Angeles River water up and out of the concrete channel on its way out to sea, is to honor this champagne of water straight off the Sierra. By cherishing it every drop, using it more sparingly and with consciousness. This walk has been undertaken to ask permission of the water to bend her back. Today we cannot unpave the Los Angeles River, not yet. First we must have the land detoxified that stretches from downtown Los Angeles to Long Beach, or will further threaten the mouth of the Los Angeles River at the Pacific Ocean. We need instead to bring the water up from the LA River, clean it, and create a secondary distribution network parallel to it. A new river delta, a subterranean delta, that restores as it moves under the industrial corridor so that one day, in the not too distant future, the LA River might be unbridled. if some of the water from the Sierra could be left behind so that grasses could grow and the mules could feed on that and drink available water along the way. When the aqueduct was constructed, that's the way it worked. Okay. 
see me here? I saw you a minute ago, now I'm kind of in a low spot. I'm going to be down below the aqueduct crossing. Um, how similar is it to the um, bridge at um, Black Rock going to the pool field? It's got more dirt on top of it. I just got a confirmation. They should be right there um, momentarily. If they're not, they're already. We're about five minutes out, maybe less. Okay, do you see CHP or can you from where you're at? There's a CHP. There's two of them. The logistics of this metabolic sculpture, the logistics of drawing the line, the logistics we all shared of moving through space together was the most perfect social experiment I've ever participated in. We all felt the meaning behind what we were doing. The whole experience was suffused with direct action. Pittsburgh Plate Glass Factory on the shores of the dry lake bed was the beginning of this work.
in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was the unknowable. Interpreted as vibration. Imagine a world where the buffalo are running wild and free. To convert those steel silos into a resonant instrument that plays itself from nothing, something emerges. away from the Sierra, south from the Panamint and Amargosa, east and south. Many an uncounted mile is the country of lost borders. Ute, Paiute, Mojave, Shoshone inhabit its frontiers. And as far into the heart of it as a man dare go, not the law, but the land sets the limit. Desert is the name it wears upon the maps. But the Indians is the better word. After rains, water accumulates in the hollows of small closed valleys and evaporating leaves hard dry levels of pure desertness that gets the local name of Dry Lake. Where the mountains are steep and the rains heavy, the pool is never quite dry, but dark and bitter, rimmed about with the efflorescence of alkaline deposits. Desert is a loose term to indicate land that supports no man. That's the cemetery, I think. That's the old post office. Yeah. 
the same phase road until we get to the aqueduct. Kind of stay to the left there. The one thing that might be worth looking at is the railroad crossing. Oh, we better look at that. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. It's right here. Void of life it never is. However dry the air and villainous. The Intermountain West and the California Desert are under assault on a scale never before seen in history by the blind search for renewable energy. The pressure begins in Washington, D.C. and spreads to state capitals and then is forced on rural governments. The immenseness of this undertaking makes the understanding of the larger picture nearly impossible for local government. Are you going to lay your ear to the track when you get here? If I'm in front, I'll ride right across and hurry whatever on the mule I'm riding not to even hesitate. Not get the others thinking. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, no, this won't be a problem. We may need some little help, like the bridge, for some of the young ones, but we'll see. I think those were in good shape. Until there is a grand conversation and reflection on the impacts of this hastened push from national and state leaders, much of what we value will be lost forever. Open spaces, unscarred landscapes, silence and beauty. Train's coming! One hundred years ago, a wholesale change on the land in the Owens Valley was brought by the thirst for Los Angeles. Today, the threat of large-scale permanent change to our landscape has reared its head once again.
This is our future once again at stake. Now, watershed. What now? Since primates carried water around in folded leaves, we've managed our water as the highest calling of civilization. These canals, ditches, and pipes that we've walked that make up the 240 miles of Los Angeles aqueduct have Babylonia, Africa, Peru, China, and Roman models to thank. What now, watershed? What now? If a forest in a watershed is clear cut, all the energies in the wood are transformed and dispersed. life forms, toxic residue burials, desecration of sacred spaces, outmoded short-term gains to support mega-developments in outside watersheds. When matter energy is transformed from one form to another, there is a net loss. This loss is called entropy.
a system that has been transformed and lost energy moves toward high entropy. We occupy these vast landscapes which cause you to think differently. They caused William Mulholland and Mayor Eaton to think differently. They caused Teddy Roosevelt to think differently, as well as Mark Twain, Mary Austin, Ansel Adams, Helen and Newton Harrison to think differently. The Los Angeles Aqueduct was masterminded by Mayor Eaton with the help of Theodore Roosevelt's Reclamation Act of 1903. The aqueduct now needs to be placed in the context of a larger hydraulic system that it spawned. Intermountain West stretches from the Eastern Sierra some 750,000 square miles to the Rocky Mountains. It's been violated in so many ways that much of it will have to be abandoned. time, it's reasonable to assume that the water that falls to the tops of the Sierra as a snowcap will one day be in the Owens Valley again. I don't know how or when that will happen. But even if you look at Rome, you see that the best systems fail at some point. Whether it lasts 500 more years, at some point, the Los Angeles Aqueduct and the Hoover Dam will remain the monumental ruins of our civilization. The metabolic studio is looking closely at the aqueduct to understand its fiscal reality, its fiscal nature, its sculptural quality, its historical quality the people who built it, the stories that are generated around it. Because we want to know, we need to know, all that we can about this incredibly important symbol of manifest destiny. Of this central notion of our time, 
that capital can be exchanged for life-giving properties like water. Matter energy can be transformed from one form to another. Reflecting on the laws of the conservation of energy and ecosystems exploitation. What now, watershed? What now? with a beginning, a coalition of watersheds wants to be formed that will protect the well-being of our four adjacent watersheds. The Columbia, the Colorado, the Rio Grande, the Great Basin. A new country that places the protection of our commons, our watershed, as the highest principle of any society. We'll call this new country Rose. <laughs> 